Hi and welcome to part 4 of my CNC rotor build series. If you haven't seen the previous parts, check them out as well. In this video I will turn this into this. It's finally time to see this rotor working and machine some parts. But first all the electronics need to be installed. The electronics translate the G-code into movements for the stepper motors. This movement is used to shape your part with the rotor. I started by installing the drag chains. For this I had to fabricate some brackets to mount the drag chains. I found a piece of large angle aluminum for the x-axis. I marked, center punched and drilled the holes for holding the drag chain and pieces. Then I mounted the brackets and the drag chain. For the y-axis I used a 1.5mm stainless steel plate that I cut off with an angle grinder. I deburred it with a file. To mount the part to the z-axis carriage it needs a 90 degree bend. I used a quick hammer trick to make this bend. I still had to drill and tap a lot of holes into the aluminum. To prevent the aluminum chips from going into the bearings and ball nuts, I taped everything off. I was too lazy to take everything apart again and it worked out fine. After this I installed a plate to me take measurements for the drag chain for the y-axis. I don't have any footage of me making the bottom rail for the y-axis drag chain, but it's just a piece of aluminum for drywall construction mounted to the aluminum profile with a piece of black plexiglass as a spacer. The z-axis drag chain brackets are also made with some aluminum profile. Since this aluminum is 3 mm thick, I drilled and tapped M3 holes to hold the drag chain. I also made 4 mm holes in the z-axis aluminum parts. With all the drag chains installed it's time to start on the motors. These are straightforward. The z-axis motor is coupled with a belt and two pulleys. The smallest pulley is mounted on the motor so that there is a slight reduction in speed. The x and y-axis motors are connected with stepper motor couplers to their axis. The x-axis has two motors that run in tandem. 
They are controlled independently to be able to set the gantry perpendicular. With the motors installed, I started on the electrical cabinet. I bought these cheap power supplies a long time ago, before I wanted to build this CNC in particular. They are 48 volts, uh, 8.3 amps, and I will... I have three of these, but I will use two of them. One is the x-axis, will be the x-axis, and the other one will be the y and the z-axis. This little thing is the driver for the stepper motor uh, it's really nice but it's rated at a maximum of 50 volts and the recommended voltage is 36 volts so I will adjust these uh, power supplies so that they give off a lower voltage so that I don't burn burn this up or accidentally over voltage these this setup is really not safe and you should you should really know what you do before you do anything like this. For the electronics I made this aluminum sheet metal box. This is the approximate layout I will put the, the electronics in this box. It will be covered by a, a plexi sheet so that, there, that it's visible what is in there. Now I will get started in uh, drilling all the holes in this side here and in the other side here as well. Uh, these are for the X axis which will be the motors will be on that side so it will be a short run and this will be for the z and y axis which will go to the uh, to the other side of the machine after laying out all the components i marked the drilling positions to do this i used a big sharpie to make the scribe lines and punch holes better visible i started with the stepper drivers and other easy stuff I drilled, tapped and chamfered all the holes. To make the big holes for the connectors on the sides of the cabinet, I used a step drill. Afterwards, I filed the holes to the correct shape. Here you can see me remaking the holes on the left side of the box. I made the lower ones in the wrong spot. There was a piece of the frame right in front of these holes. The trapezium holes for the encoders are cut with a jigsaw.
I covered the bottom holes up with a piece of sheet aluminum and braced it to the existing part. Bracing for this is ideal. It's more than strong enough and there is no extra dust coming into the electrical cabinet. It is time to start installing the electronics into the cabinet. Um, everything that you see here needs to get in here. Uh, except for the tools of course. While mounting the big power supplies I made sure that they are not stacked directly on top of each other. But a bit to the side so that I have easy access to the terminals on both power supplies. The rail with terminals will be used to distribute 24 volts and 240 volts. It also has enough earthing terminals for the complete cabinet. The adding CNC board, which is the brain for the CNC, is mounted to the side wall of the cabinet. This side wall will become the bottom when it's installed inside the frame. This way it is easy to see and access to install extra peripherals. To connect the terminal board I used a 50 pins flat cable that is divided up in segments of 10 to connect to the adding CNC board. The terminal will be used to connect to peripherals except for the PWM to analog out converter and the stepper motor drivers which are connected directly. In between the terminals and the stepper motor controllers is a solid state relay for the water cooling pump for the spindle and some space to add more when needed. Next up is the VFD. It needs a lot of room around it for air circulation. I'm going to start with the encoder connectors, which for which I will use these old uh, VGA cables, and I cut them already in two. Uh, one short side for this side, and a long side to get to there. So I found out something really interesting. I knew that all the pins would uh, connect through because I measured it be before uh, from one end to the other. But what I didn't measure was whether these pins are uh, or what these pins are connected to. So now I encountered that I couldn't find pin 11 in, in the wires here. And what happened actually was if I if you look at this, if I connect to the, the the ground to pin 11, you can see it, it connects through, which is really a problem because this will also be the earth and yeah. So we cannot use the default VGA cables and uh, well, I will have to order some male plugs for here and females I have already I soldered the cables to the connectors before installing them. This is easier than trying to do this while mounted. And of course installing the connectors. Then it is a long and tedious process of wiring up the electrical cabinet. I labored every wire with a handwritten label so that it is easy to identify which wire goes where. Especially if I ever have to disconnect something. And I already had to do that 
and was really happy that I labeled everything. Finally, time to install the cabinet and of course wire everything to the cabinet. Before connecting the spindle motor to the VFD, I need to configure the VFD and for this I need power. So I installed my recycled power switch, which came from an old Stella brewery. Put on the breaker, uh, that's one that goes on, uh, that turns on, the driver seems to work as well, and there is the VFD. I posted my Huang Yang VFD and spindle configurations in a separate video. Please click on the card to find the settings video for the VFD. First run of the spindle. You can hear the high pitch from the bearings being run in. Here are the settings I used for my machine in the adding CNC software. These are based on Henry's settings posted on his cnczone.nl open source build. One thing I noticed is that the speed unit in this settings is astronomical units per second, which would defy physics as we know it when we use the speeds in this table. So this machine will be blazingly fast. First time homing the machine with a really bad focus. And then time for the big test. After a few hours of figuring out how to make something and finally getting it to the machine, this was a fantastic moment. No, I can say that my speeds are really slow. I just did some engraving which turned out quite bad, but I learned how to do it. This is the first project I made with my CNC mill, which you will see in my next video next year. Be sure to like and subscribe as I will bring out more projects and CNC milling videos next year. Happy New Year and enjoy the time lapse at the end of this video.
Thank you.